The Nintendo Switch eShop is home to literally thousands of games, many of them being budget priced releases. I like to check out some of these cheaper games from time to time, and I usually can find some games that I enjoy and, well, some games that I don't enjoy. So today on the channel, I want to go over some $5 or less Nintendo Switch eShop games that I think are worth checking out from a variety of different genres, including a game that is now one of my favorite Switch games, period. Now the only catch is, none of these games can be on sale. The actual release price has to be $5 or less. What's up guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's jump into this list of games that are cheap that I've been playing recently and you might enjoy. The first game we're going to talk about is a game called Without Escape. Now, PC adventure games were big in the 90s. I remember going to places like Office Depot with my dad whenever he needed something and gravitating towards the sample computer that they had and checking out games like Myst because, well, I didn't have a computer and I was just fascinated by the graphics of these games. Now, of course, as time has gone on, the photorealism of games like Myst is a commonplace in full adventure games and I never really thought about the genre afterwards. Now, with that being said, Without Escape was a game I just purchased on a whim because I liked the premise of it. A horror point and click adventure game, and I ended up really enjoying my time with it. Without Escape tells the tale of an older teenager whose parents go to visit his grandparents and he's basically left alone in the house. Some strange things start to occur in the house that make him question what is going on and it quickly spirals out of control rather fast. The gameplay is simple, there's basic puzzles throughout the house that you have to solve. You go from stagnant room to stagnant room surveying things, looking for clues and finding items that will help you do things like unlock doors and solve the subsequent puzzles within the game. There's even a fake GameCube in the game that got a good chuckle out of me as well. The game then turns into Mist Me Hellraiser though, and as a huge Hellraiser fan, well at least the first few films, I really got into this game starting from this point. The music and environments get really creepy, and the story maintains enough interest that made me want to finish the game. Now it's not a super long game if you don't get stuck on any of the puzzles, and honestly, as a novice to the genre, I didn't find any of the puzzles too cryptic besides, I don't know, maybe one or two of them, and I wouldn't say it does anything to sort of push the genre. It's clearly a throwback to 90s point and click adventure games, and I think it does that well enough, right down to the low resolution FMV scenes scattered throughout the game. If you like point and click games and you like puzzle games and are a fan of horror stuff as well, Without Escape is definitely worth checking out at $5 and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Budget racing games usually aren't anything to write home about because, well, they're usually not very good, but I decided to take the plunge and purchase a game called JDM Racing and was pleasantly surprised by it. Now, I enjoy racing games, as you'll see with another game in this list, and while I prefer my German cars to the Japanese scene, I do have a love for older JDM vehicles from the mid-80s to early 90s. JDM Racing is a pretty straightforward racing game. You get a car based on a classic chassis, and then you hit the road. You can customize your car in different ways, but it's pretty basic. You just upgrade things like a turbo or an intercooler to make your car go faster. The racing types of the game have you doing different sorts of styles of racing. Some are checkpoint based, some of them are straight up racing against opponents, and some of them are even drag racing. Surprisingly, the graphics in JDM Racing are pretty good and gave me an HD Dreamcast racing game feel to it, and I mean that in a good way. Cars look nice and clean, tracks are vibrant, and everything is pretty smooth frame rate wise. The best part of the presentation though has to be the music with a fantastic synthwave soundtrack that has some really catchy tunes that I almost want to track down and add to my music collection as well. Here's a little sample. Now there were a few things in this game that I wasn't a huge fan of, such as the bare bones menu system, the lack of multiplayer, and the limited tracks in the game. There's only three main tracks in the game, and although you take different paths throughout the tracks at times, it can be a bit cumbersome to see the same backgrounds over and over again. Still though, at $5, I had way more fun with this game than I thought I would, so if you're looking for a simplistic racing game, or even just like the golden era of JDM cars, you might want to check out JDM Racing. 
2D platformers are a dime a dozen on the Nintendo Switch eShop, and honestly, I played a lot of them, and then many of them felt very similar. Now, one game in the genre that did manage to stick out, though, was a game called Squidlet. Yes, the squid is lit, I guess. Squidlet has two positives going into it for me, a Game Boy aesthetic and a price point of just $1.99. And honestly, Squidlet managed to be a fun but short adventure. Squidlet has you playing as a squid who shoots ink and basically must stop an evil person ruining a land. The game only really uses one button, and you jump with that button and pressing it again will allow you to shoot ink which will take out your enemies. If you take hits from enemies though, don't fret as you eat muffins to regain your health that are scattered throughout the level because, well I guess squids like muffins? There's your science lesson for the day from RGT. Anyways, the game does do a good job of switching up gameplay mechanisms as you play it, such as having to defeat a certain number of enemies before going to the next area, light puzzle mechanics, and some fun and creative boss battles. Like I said though, the main thing that drew me into this game was the Game Boy aesthetic, and the background of this game is actually tied into that. The game originally started out as a Game Boy music creation, and then it evolved into an actual game. Everything from the amount of pixels on the screen to resolution and audio was actually designed on a Game Boy as well. The main problem with Squidlet is that it's a tad on the easy side, and very short, with the credits rolling for me about 30 minutes or so into the game, but it's still, at just $1.99, it's a fun enough adventure to check out, especially if you have nostalgia for Game Boy games. One of my favorite NES games of all time is Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, and I always thought it was weird that there weren't more Punch-Out clones back in the day. Creepy Brawlers is essentially that Mike Tyson's Punch-Out clone that many people have wanted, but with a twist. Instead of facing various boxers, you are fighting against a stars of classic horror films, which of course is right up my alley. Now I'll be honest, I suck at this game. Punch-Out is a game of course based on patterns and tells on when to counter, and having to relearn these sort of things is actually tougher than I would have guessed, and now I kind of understand why so many people suck at playing Punch-Out for the first time. Now much like Squidlet being a Game Boy game, Creepy Brawlers is actually a game from Mega Cat Studios that was released on the NES, meaning that it's a true 8-bit game. The gameplay is pretty simple, you gotta knock out your opponent. Dodging attacks successfully will give you a counter punch, and your gloves will light up. That's when you can really wail on your opponent and do some major damage to take them out. It definitely takes a bit to get used to the timing of everything and when to dodge with certain characters, but Creepy Brawlers is one of those games where you keep wanting to play it to get better, and at 5 bucks, fans of Punch-Out will definitely have some fun with it. Now our final two games on this list are the cheapest games on this list because, well they're free. Yes, they're free. First off, let's talk about Super Kirby Clash. Now, Super Kirby Clash was showcased and released during a recent Nintendo Direct, but for whatever reason, I never got around to playing it until I started to look for some cheap games. And honestly, it's pretty fun. You play as a Kirby and you team up with other Kirbys in a boss rush style of game. You defeat a boss as quickly as possible and you earn rewards. With those rewards, you can upgrade your equipment and make your Kirby stronger. There's four different classes of Kirby you can choose from, such as a swordsman or a mage. I chose the swordsman, and honestly, it plays a lot like Kirby does in Super Smash Bros. Each character has a variety of moves as well, so it's fun to figure out which character fits your style the most. You can even play online with people as well and challenge bosses, but I did have some issues with disconnections in typical Nintendo online fashion. Now while the game is completely free, you can purchase the in-game currency known as gem apples from the eShop, but in my time with the game, I never really felt compelled to take the dive. The presentation of the game is top notch as well, with bright and colorful graphics, well animated bosses, and that classic Kirby soundtrack. If you have a Nintendo Switch Online account, and I'm sure you do if you're watching this video, Super Kirby Clash is a great time waster. And much like Super Kirby Clash, the final game is also a free game that I have slept on for just far, far too long, and honestly, I regret it. Not only is the final game my favorite game in this list of games, but I will venture to say it is one of my favorite games to play on the Nintendo Switch right now, period, and that is Asphalt 9 Legends. Now, the Asphalt series has been around for quite a while. I remember playing one on the DS way back in the day. But Asphalt 9 Legends is so much fun that I would gladly have paid like $20 for this game and had no issues with it. Asphalt 9 Legends is a high-octane arcade racing game, very reminiscent of 90s-style racing games like San Francisco Rush, but with a twist. You can do a 360 to swipe out your enemies around you and take them out. It gives me flashbacks to Burnout 3, which is one of my favorite arcade racing games of all time, and that is a very good thing. 
As you progress through the races in the game, you can unlock things like new game modes, cards that you can use to unlock more cars, and in-game currency. The in-game currency can then be used to upgrade your cars and keep you ahead of the pack. The game does encourage you to do things like microtransactions, but in my several hours with the game, I never felt like I hit a wall where I needed to utilize these microtransactions. It was just sort of optional if you wanted some additional stuff like cars easily. You can even do online races. There's online clubs and there's online leaderboards as well. The online racing was pretty smooth in the few races that I did, but there was one thing that I really didn't like. The awesome 360 maneuver to take out enemies isn't a thing online, as you just clip through the cars, which was a disappointment. However, in the grand scheme of things, it is a minor issue, as this game features over 800 races, offline races, local multiplayer, and some gorgeous graphics as well. I can see some people slipping down the microtransaction rabbit hole with this game, but hold fast friends, as you get the entire racing experience for zero dollars and zero cents, and honestly, it's worth every single penny. Alright, so those are some cheap Nintendo Switch eShop games that I've been playing lately that I honestly enjoyed. So let me know in the comments section down below if you have played any of these games and if you enjoy them, and maybe give me some recommendations of cheap Nintendo Switch eShop games under $5 that I might want to check out that you feel like I'm missing out on. And as always guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Be sure to check out other videos on the channel, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.